you might not feel it, but high blood pressure, often called the silent killer, could be quietly damaging your body every day. And while you've probably heard that too much salt is bad for your blood pressure, what if I told you the real key wasn't about what you cut out, but what you add in? Turns out quite a few nutrients can have a powerful impact on keeping your blood pressure in check. And some of them might surprise you. Hit me, Producer Potts. Dr. Sarah, you made a short video focusing on just three nutrients that help us to lower blood pressure, but you mentioned there are many more and that got everybody curious. How would you like to satisfy all of our curiosity and do a deep dive to talk about all of the nutrients that impact our blood pressure? I would love to. Like that just tickles my nerd brain. Maybe we should start with why even care if you have high blood pressure, which is blood pressure over 130 over 90. It's because of the literal actual pressure that it puts on your blood vessels. And while you may have no symptoms, that's why hypertension or high blood pressure is often called the silent killer, that damage to your blood vessels can build up over years, which is why high blood pressure is a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease, including heart disease, heart attack, heart failure, and stroke. But high blood pressure also increases risk of chronic kidney disease and even renal failure, hypertensive retinopathy, and it's also associated with our risk for type 2 diabetes. And before we dig into all of the nutrients that help to regulate our blood pressure, I feel it's important to acknowledge that there are other risk factors. Some we can't change, like age and genetics, and some that are modifiable, meaning they relate to our lifestyle. In particular, lack of physical activity or sedentary lifestyle, excessive alcohol consumption, and smoking are all risk factors for hypertension, high blood pressure. So if you smoke or drink, uh, those are action steps to work on before focusing on adding more nutrient-dense foods with these nutrients in them. And working on physical activity can actually help to regulate appetite and cravings. So that's a great one to work in tandem on with diet changes. So with that important preamble out of the way, let's dig into nutrients that impact our blood pressure. The first one is vitamin D. With some studies suggesting a 12% reduced risk of hypertension for every 10 nanograms per milliliter of serum vitamin D levels. A 2019 meta-analysis that included data from 46 studies showed that vitamin D supplementation reduced systolic blood pressure by two and a half millimeters of mercury, with even greater reductions for those who had low vitamin D at baseline. A 2015 systematic review in older adults with hypertension showed that a vitamin D supplement of at least 800 IU led to notable reductions in blood pressure. And we also have a variety of clinical trials showing that vitamin D is really important for endothelial function. Those are the cells that line all of our blood vessels. The best food sources of vitamin D are seafood, especially fatty fish like salmon or mackerel or herring, liver, egg yolks, and mushrooms if they are grown either in sunlight or under UV lights. But if you are deficient in vitamin D, it can be next to impossible to bring your levels up to the normal range through food and safe sun exposure alone. So it's important to ask your doctor to test your vitamin D levels and ask them for a recommendation on a vitamin D supplement. Ideally, your doctor would retest in six months or so to make sure that you're getting enough vitamin D to bring your levels up to normal and that you're not overdoing vitamin D because too much vitamin D can also be a problem. The next nutrient that is protective against hypertension is calcium. A 2019 dose response meta-analysis showed that higher dietary calcium reduced hypertension risk by 11%. The study authors calculated that for every 500 milligrams of dietary calcium we consume daily, our risk of hypertension drops by 7%. Good food sources of calcium include dairy products, canned fish with the bones like canned salmon or canned sardines, molasses, and some green vegetables and seaweed. The next nutrient for lowering blood pressure is magnesium. 
We have a collection of scientific studies that show that increasing dietary magnesium improves cardiovascular disease risk factors like hypertension, as well as vascular calcification. And for example, a 2016 review that looked at patients with hypertension, coronary artery disease, or type 2 diabetes found that upping magnesium improved blood flow in arteries. Magnesium-rich foods include green vegetables, especially dark leafy greens, nuts and seeds, especially pumpkin seeds, fish, legumes, cocoa powder, and avocados. The next nutrient that is super important for blood pressure is potassium. One study showed that study participants with the highest dietary potassium, as measured by the sodium to potassium ratio in the urine, they had a 62% lower risk of hypertension compared to the study participants with the lowest dietary potassium. One meta-analysis found that in people with hypertension, upping potassium decreased their systolic blood pressure by nearly seven millimeters of mercury and their diastolic blood pressure by four and a half millimeters of mercury. Good sources of potassium include legumes, root vegetables like potatoes and sweet potatoes, melons like cantaloupe, bananas, dried apricots, and yogurt. The next nutrient is a monounsaturated fat called oleic acid. This is the main fat in olive oil and avocado oil, which are famous for their heart health benefits. And for example, a 2018 study showed that study participants consuming a, an olive oil rich diet had significant reductions in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure compared to the study participants who were put on a low fat diet. The best food sources of oleic acid are olives, avocados, and their oils, as well as many nuts and seeds like peanuts, sunflower seeds, pecans, and macadamia nuts. Choline is another nutrient that is linked to blood pressure. A 2022 study showed that the higher dietary choline was, the lower blood pressure was on average. And they showed that the study participants with the highest dietary choline had an 8% lower risk of hypertension than the study participants with the lowest dietary choline. Good food sources of choline include eggs, especially the yolks, poultry, fish, liver, and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. Coenzyme Q10 has been shown in a variety of clinical trials to have blood pressure lowering effects. And in fact, a 2022 meta-analysis showed that supplemental coenzyme Q10 of 100 to 200 milligrams per day significantly lowered systolic blood pressure. Another meta-analysis from 2007 showed really big effects of CoQ10 supplementation, including a reduction of systolic blood pressure by 17 millimeters of mercury and diastolic blood pressure by 10 millimeters of mercury. And interestingly, in people who take medication to lower their blood pressure, clinical trials have shown that also taking a supplemental coenzyme Q10 can lower the amount of medication needed to keep blood pressure in check. The best food sources of coenzyme Q10 include grapes, fatty fish like salmon, trout, and sardines, organ meat, and meat in general like beef, chicken, and pork. Now here's a nutrient to actually lower sodium. A 2017 meta-analysis showed that reducing our sodium intake by 1.8 to 3.2 grams per day, so that's reducing our salt intake by not even a teaspoon, resulted in an average 4.2 millimeters of mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure and 2.1 millimeters of mercury for diastolic blood pressure. The easiest way to reduce sodium intake is just by cooking at home. Nearly three quarters of the sodium that most people consume comes from packaged foods, processed foods, fast food, and restaurant meals. And only 11% of dietary sodium comes from cooking at home, including both the salt added to meals while you're cooking and what's added at the table. So if you cook the majority of your meals at home, you, you probably don't need to worry about sodium. And here's a nutrient that has blood pressure lowering effects, but only in people with polymorphisms of the MTHFR gene that affect methylation, like C677T. For those people, there are multiple placebo-controlled clinical trials that show that upping vitamin B2 can have a blood pressure lowering effect. Good sources of vitamin B2 include organ meat, mushrooms, leafy vegetables, eggs, and dairy products. And finally, to wrap up this topic of nutrients for blood pressure is a variety of phytonutrients. 
For example, flavonoids, which are found in tea, berries, and citrus fruit. A 2019 meta-analysis showed that higher flavonoid intake could reduce blood pressure by about five millimeters of mercury. Anthocyanins, which we find in berries and red or purple varieties of vegetables like red cabbage, purple sweet potatoes, purple carrots. A 2011 study showed that higher anthocyanin intake reduced the risk of hypertension by 8%. Catechins, which are found in green and black tea, also lower blood pressure. A 2013 meta-analysis showed that drinking catechin-rich tea reduced systolic blood pressure by two and a half millimeters of mercury and diastolic blood pressure by one and a half millimeters of mercury. Quercetin, which is found in onions and apples, reduces blood pressure. A 2021 meta-analysis showed about a four millimeters of mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure. Curcumin, which is found in turmeric, a 2019 systematic review also showed about a four millimeters of mercury drop in blood pressure. Lycopene, which is found in tomatoes and red peppers and watermelon. A 2016 meta-analysis showed that higher lycopene intake reduced systolic blood pressure by about five millimeters of mercury. And finally, nitrates, which are found in leafy vegetables like spinach and arugula, root vegetables, especially beets, and some other vegetables, most notably celery. A 2015 meta-analysis showed that upping nitrates reduced systolic blood pressure by about four and a half millimeters of mercury and diastolic blood pressure by about two millimeters of mercury. So I think you can see thematically in this review of all of the nutrients that reduce our risk of hypertension, why diets that are abundant in vegetables, fruit, legumes, seafood, nuts and seeds, and olive oil, all foods we focus on on Nutrivore, why these diets are so good for regulating blood pressure and lowering cardiovascular disease risk. Wow, Dr. Sarah, that was so amazing. Thank you for downloading us on all of that information. Where can people learn more? So if you're interested in learning more about Nutrivore, I recommend grabbing a copy of my book, Nutrivore, which explains the connection between 27 different nutrients and different health conditions, but also has a really cool table in one of the appendices that lists all of the nutrients that are important for 120 different health conditions. And of course, hypertension and cardiovascular disease are covered extensively in my book. And if you just want to nerd out about all of the nutrients that affect our blood pressure and risk for cardiovascular disease, I have eBooks available for that in my Patreon. So my Patreon members get so many goodies every single month two podcasts, episodes, a nutrient fun fact sheet, a new ebook in a series. Right now we're doing nutrients for health condition. So there's an ebook in there already for nutrients for high blood pressure, nutrients for high cholesterol, nutrients for heart disease, nutrients for stroke, nutrients for type two diabetes, nutrients for bone health and osteoporosis, nutrients for osteoarthritis, nutrients for Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and nutrients for cancer. And a, a new ebook dropping every month. Plus there's the old series of Eat the Rainbow. You get the full archive of podcasts and nutrient fun fact sheets, the full perusable Nutrivore score database organized either alphabetically or numerically, whatever you fancy, Nutrivore quick start guides, and also the suggestion box for weekly Q&A videos. So if you're not a member of my Patreon yet, I'd love to see you there.